some power steering problems on, on a car, Matt. Benny, you ever run Darlington without power steering? Uh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Most of my life I ran without power steering. It wasn't fun, was it? Oh, no. No, no. It's not a fun day now for Ricky Rudd. He was flirting with a top 10 finish most of the day. And then the power steering pump locked up, threw the belts off. He will now have to run the rest of the race without power steering. It cannot be fixed. The good thing for Ricky is lap 255, not lap 5. This has got a long way to go without power steering at this you. place. This is for sixth and seventh spots. Elliot Sadler in the 38. And Jeremy Mayfield in the 19. Both just slipping by Kevin the Page. So let's make that fifth, sixth, and seventh. 38 car, nice little comeback for him. He had dropped back as far as 19th at lap 132. Now about 124 laps later, he is up into fifth place. see Kurt Busch the 97 following Mongo Jimmy Spencer in the seven car and Spencer being the gentleman moves over let's Kurt go by Kurt is on the lead lap Jimmy is five laps down in 25th place I really believe when these guys say that it's over what is past is over I agree with them. I think both of those guys feel that way well I think they've said that in the past but I think they mean it this time uh, yeah exactly exactly I would think that after what's transpired over the last two weeks, from Kurt Busch's perspective, um, it's, it's really had to have been an eye-opener for him. I mean, he definitely came out on the bad end of public opinion on the incident in Michigan. And, in fact, it went so far this week as that he had a meeting with his team sponsors and some representatives from Roush Racing. And Kurt issued a statement apologizing to and his fans and the team and his fellow competitors and the sponsors saying we expect a certain level of performance and goodwill out of our driver and we're going to work with Kurt to make sure we get that. He said they're going to have meetings with his teammates and so on to try and uh, mentor him, if you will. And all that stuff is good because, after all, Kurt Busch is still a very young man, just 25 years old. And but Kurt and um, had gotten into Sterling Marlin racing for second last weekend at Bristol, and that drew the ire of the fans as well. Kurt has uh, said that his actions both on and off the track are going to be how fans determine him and deter uh, determine his future course. <laughs> and, What's the Sterling say it for? And, and he, he's gone about trying to take care of that off the track earlier this weekend. Thank you. Well, um, Kurt come over this morning and apologized. It was all his fault. And, uh, you know, just I told him you got to slow down about that much. And, uh, you know, we're getting, we're getting all this trouble. And uh, that's a lot of guys coming young. You know, they like it to come out of the truck series and just gung-ho charge, charge, charge. And, you know, they think it's a 100-lap race and it's a 400-lap race. And uh, you got to be right at the end to, to win these things. And he's doing good to win his share, but uh, he's kind of roughed a few feathers along the way. And I talked to Sterling Marlin, Alan about that conversation that he had with Kurt Busch this morning. The conversation took place yesterday. He said he also pointed out a couple of other instances where Kurt went over the line in his opinion. Indianapolis was one. He said, Kurt, you've got to listen to me. You're losing respect in the garage area, and if that happens to you, it will be a long road. Stop it now, turn it around, and things will be fine for you. And that's the most important thing. You don't want to lose... You, know, you get the fans mad at you, that's one thing, but you don't want to lose the respect of your fellow competitors. It takes too long to earn that respect, but it doesn't take long to lose it. You know, back in the 80s, Darrell Waltrip was booed at the racetrack by the fans and what have you, but I don't think that Darrell ever lost the respect of the drivers. We all knew what a great job he could, and really, really and truly, what an ambassador for the sport he could be, and he has been since... Uh, in the mid 80s since rusty wallace took the black cat from him in the, the winston race there and, yep that's true and uh, then there was a fellow by the name of earnhardt who wore, wore the black hat as the villain of the sport for quite some time it's not a bad thing necessarily to wear the black hat grandstand wise right but it is right. a very bad thing to lose the respect of your fellow competitors 
Greg Biffle out in front by 1.007 seconds over Kevin Harvick with 104 laps to go, Bill. And uh, you might be thinking, Benny and Wally, maybe that's too far out front because he's really racing that car hard. They're constantly on the radio. Don't run any harder than you have to. Take it easy. That's a hard thing to do when your car is that good and you're running that fast, isn't it? Well, yes, and then when it's your first time or one of your first times here on this racetrack, I, y it appears that he's running that hard. You can see him running the car. You see the car jumping sideways, uh, getting off the corners, getting in the corners. It, it will just have to, right there. You see the car slide off it too. I think that's going to bite him in the end because Harvick is smooth, and he's going to have more tire at the end of the race, I believe. Drivers who've won this very difficult Southern 500 in their first try, you can go a long way back to get to Nelson Stacy in 1961. 42 years ago, and Johnny Mance won the race in 1950. They started 75 cars that day. Mance was the 75th qualifier. He was the slowest car, but he ran around the racetrack at about 60, 70 miles per hour, and all the rest of them would run, have to change tires. Gone was hard on tires going, yeah. the first time. <laughs> he just kept going. It was literally the, the, the turtle beat the hare once again. And that was the very first Southern 500, September 4th, 1950. Greg Biffle leads its 54th running today. Greg Biffle out front in the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Outstanding run for him. Great crew work. Got a big break under the last caution when they came in. His right front tire only had one pound of air in it. Apparently he had run over something during the caution period. Still a big break for him to get the four new tires. He's out front now, but the Darlington, the key is not being too fast too soon. This was the radio traffic just a moment ago. All right, buddy, race the racetrack for me now, nice and smooth. Starting to open it up a little bit. Let's not run any harder than we have to. That 12 shouldn't let you go when you get there. He just wants some help if a caution comes out. Plenty of room. That's it, Bill. Be smart, baby. Race the racetrack. But outside. What? He is fast right now. Yeah. He's, he's also the number one cheerleader because when he made his way to the front, passing those two cars a few laps ago, he got on the radio and let out a big Yahoo! How about that pass? Now the caution's out. Uh, debris, Bill, on the racetrack. Eighth caution of the Southern 500. And Greg Biffle will slow. Doesn't look like anybody uh, is going to get uh, many laps back. Looks like Kenny Wallace has dropped something. He's bounced off the wall in the Stacker 2 car. Kenny was involved in that wreck earlier. Yep. In turns three and four. See all the damage that was from that wreck. But you know what? We have to apologize to Dave because now four car Kevin LePage had fallen back to 14th, but he can stop now, change four tires, and be just like everybody else. He didn't lose anything. No, he four didn't. Four car. He, you know, he gained a couple laps up front, but he didn't lose anything either. Sorry, Dave. So we'll get ready What's for that guy? Sorry. Stops. Sorry, Dave. I hope you'll expect uh, What happened now? The four car. He's okay. Oh, well, no, that's all right. You know, I don't don't exonerate me yet. He may go down a lap later for a, a mistake on pit road. You got to make these calls under pressure, don't you? Yes, you do. Yeah, everything worked out for them, though. Good to see Kevin LePage back in a Winston Cup car. See a little bit of damage there. Right front, left rear. It's not been a completely clean day for LePage, but again, he's on the lead lap. And there are only 18 of the 43 starters that are still on the lead lap. Yeah, they're having a good race. Yep. They need a good race. Yeah, nice to see for Larry McClure's team. Here they come. Biffle, Harvick, McMurray, Elliott, Mayfield, the top five coming to Pit Road. Marty? Kevin Harvick running second, an easy in. No one behind him. No one will be in front of him either. He said, that was not bad right there. Don't touch it. He wants a new bottle of water, one pack of ice. It'll be four tires for Harvick. And as we said, no adjustments. Matt? Bush slides to a stop, a track bar adjustment. And the last stop really helped the race car. It was tight. Another adjustment, this time also going down on air pressure on the left side tires, Dave. A trio of changes for Jamie McMurray. Air up on the left sides, track bar and wedge adjustment. Loose car, Bill? Car is good for Greg Biffle. No chassis adjustments, just four tires and fuel. But remember, on the restarts, they're battling that vapor lock problem. We'll see what happens. Good stuff for these guys. The 29 is going to beat them out, though. Yep, sure is. Harvick out first, looked like Bill Elliott, and Greg Biffle had a pretty close race for second. 
great stop for Elliott's crew. Yeah. Mike Ford's guys doing the job. Tip the cap to Kyle Petty, too. Well, it's been a very struggling season for him. He's still on the lead lap. Just 18 of the 43 starters are. Under caution in the Southern 500 at Darlington.